Hey, welcome back. We're the Kanpai guys. We Kanpai, so you don't have to. Unless you want to. Today we'll be looking at the Amber Ebisu. Amber Ebisu, this is a uh, autumn beer. So, not officially, but it was released for the autumn season. The can design kind of resembles other autumn beers that are released around this time. It is a hundred percent a more mature design yes. than uh, just throwing leaves on a can. It's more on brand too. Like everything by Heavy is Class. kind of simple. Today uh, we will also be sampling a rather famous local snack, the dried anago. Dried anago, a snack you can smell ten miles away. What do you think? Is it the durian of the sea? It very well could be. It's could be. either this or dried squid. Dried squid is very fragrant. If you're new to the channel, please uh, subscribe. And if you would like instant updates of new videos and when we go live, please push the bell notification icon. All right, so let's jump into it. I don't want to jump in. Okay, let's not jump in. Okay, so, did you go fishing today? Did I go fishing? Did you go angling today? No, no. River fishing? I stayed home today. In Ehime, fishing is a popular pastime. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> did you go fishing today? I didn't go fishing today. So why does it smell like this? <laughs> <laughs> Getting a little aggressive there, aren't you? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, honestly, I just assumed you, you didn't take a shower before you came. I took, uh, I, will, I will be taking a shower after this video. I think I'll be sure. taking three showers after yeah. this. Yeah, there's a quite a unique smell on this table. We have a unique snack today. Yes. But before we get to the snack, let's uh, take a look at our beer here. The Premium Amber Ebisu. Amber, nice word. Amber. It's a good word. It is a good word. I love amber. I think of the, you know, scene from the first Jurassic Park movie. Mm. With a little mosquito stuck in amber. I was thinking the same thing. I always wanted that as a kid. Like when I was a little kid, I wanted that little amber stone with a like prehistoric mosquito in it. You want dino DNA? I wanted some dino DNA. Mr. DNA, where did you come from? Do you want uh, Richard Attenborough's cane with the amber on the top? <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, yes, I did. <laughs> Let's be honest, everybody wanted that. So, yeah. yeah. Somebody has that right now. Steven Spielberg. Where do you think that cane is now? That's what I think it is. Do you is. think it's like in a prop room in some studio somewhere? Could where? be in like at the end of Indiana Jones where they put like the chest into a box in this massive warehouse. Mm -hmm. it could just be in a box in a warehouse. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> On the Universal lot or something. Anyway. So. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Amber Ibis beer. I guess yes. we should introduce it. Ebisu makes very, you know, premium beer. It's usually more expensive than the other beers available. It's about the same as premium malts by Suntory, isn't it? But yeah. The same price point yeah. as that one. And yeah, always good quality. Mm. Um, I think you know a little bit more about the history of Ebisu than I do. I know like they're deeply rooted in like bringing in hops and ingredients from Germany. It's uh, ba basically based on a German beer, and they still use German ingredients even today. I guess the reason I am I know a bit about it is because I've been to the Ebis Museum twice. Hmm, before. okay. Yeah. That's right, you gave me a, an omiyage, yeah. a souvenir. Yeah, if you go to that museum, it's actually in an area of Tokyo called Ebis. And Ebis is famous for the music from The Third Man. Do you know that movie? Black and White? Orson Welles movie? I don't. 
uh, in that movie there's like a famous kind of jingle tune And when a train pulls into every station in Tokyo, they play that music. No way, really? Yeah, but it's the original tune for the Ebis commercial. That's cool. The beer is named after the area. It's a really cool small museum. They will show you the history of Ebis. They'll teach you about the first Ebis bars that opened. When a beer was not so popular, but after World War II it became more popular. Like whiskey, I guess. Mm -hmm. And they'll also show you how to pour Ebis. Okay. So I will serve it to you today. Thank you very In much. The Ebis Museum way. If you have any knowledge on this subject, <clears throat> could you also talk a little bit about the Ebisu man? Oh, the dude on the front? The dude on the front. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is one of the seven gods. The symbol actually is interesting that the original Ebis can, I believe, was missing the line on the fishing rod or like the scales on the fish. So the, the current logo is slightly different. So I've heard that this Ebisu man is the he's the god of uh, merchants mm. or like success. He's famous for his long earlobes, and the long earlobes also represent prosperity. Um, <laughs> this is something my wife told me, unless I'm like really getting this wrong, but I think it's right. But what is very fundamental to today's video is that he's a fisherman. That's right. And then next to this can, we have. Jaws washed up on the seashore. <laughs> washed up and stayed there for a few days, I think. Uh, going back to the Ebisa Man for a second. The Ebis Man? Is yes. that his official name? Ebis Man, yes. Ebis Man. If you happen to find a can of Ebisa beer where the Ebisa Man is holding two fish, then it's considered a, a lucky can. I think the taste is the same, but... Twice as fishy? I don't know if, like, you get, does like, it, a prize from the company. Does it taste or... like this? Two fish. Uh, I would hope not, but then I don't know. Could be. What is that, Thai? Could be. That's a Thai, yeah. Sea bream. Cool. So actually he's holding a Thai, which is a sea bream, which is the most famous fish where we live. Uh, if you visit the Ebis Museum, you can drink green tea Ebis. Hmm, really? Yeah. They have a green tea version of the beer. They also have a stout, a couple of other like German style beers, like a Pilsner or something. They have a white ale too, which they white ale, really? released earlier hmm. this year. Like Alex, do you want to do donuts? I would <clears> love to. Oh, wait, maybe I should. Why is that? The museum way, right? Oh, please. The museum way. So they recommend that if you pour this directly all the way up, or if you pour a little bit weight and then pour it like a waterfall, mm -hmm. the taste will be different. So Interesting. In the museum, they will pour you both ways, and then you try them at the same time. The exact same can. So which way do you recommend? The museum way. Could get messy though. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, so you just pour a little in. By the way, today we're using our official abuse glasses. No expense bed. That's right. Dress it pop. You think I should work there? Work where Jurassic Park? No, the Ibis Museum. <laughs> <laughs> you could, yeah. She said after you do that, you can like top up like this because you're going to get a lot of head. It smells very clean. It smells pretty standard to me. Nothing really sticks out about it. Different to the regular Ibis. The color is definitely different. It's got a deeper color. Yeah, it does. All right, I'm going in for the taste. Okay. Come by. Come by. It's kind of lighter than I expected. The aftertaste kind of is a little bit deeper than the initial taste, I find. It kind of tastes like a brown ale to me. A brown ale. Yeah. Like a standard brown ale. It's not heavily carbonated. It, yeah. 
It reminds me of like Newcastle. It was for these men that in 1927 we created Newcastle Brown Ale, which is perfect because nothing sells beer like old footage of people who had it way worse than you do. I was about to say the same thing. Really? Yeah. yeah. They saw Nuki Brown out. I mean, I love Newcastle. Don't get me wrong. It's awesome. You got you got to say the real name. What's the real name? Nuki Brown. Hmm? Nikki Brown? Nuki Brown. Nuki. Nuki Brown. Nuki is Newcastle. Newcastle. Nuki. Nuki Brown. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, I don't think anybody in America says that. Really? Yeah. You buy that in like metal bars, like underground basement metal bars in England. What? Really? Yeah, and you just get the whole bottle, like 600 milliliter bottle. You just drink it straight from the bottle. It's crazy. Like in the States, Newcastle is more popular with like older men, like dudes in their 40s and 50s, I think. Older men? Yeah. In England, we often buy that in like metal clubs or rock clubs. It's usually you buy one, get one free. That's crazy. Again. Need a glass, mate? Yeah. To pop the cap off. <laughs> <laughs> so it tastes like a Nuki Brown. <laughs> Is that a good thing? It's, I mean, I like <laughs> Nuki Brown. However, I was expecting... Nuki Brown's a lot cheaper than this thing. Yes. I was expecting something a little bit more unique from Ebis. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's okay. It doesn't have like any stand help like distinct flavor mm -hmm. per se okay, if I especially was... the, the last one i tried the white ale was so good so unique oh yeah the, the white can one that was, that was yeah good. i mean obviously in japan it's a little hard to come by N nuki brown nuki brown it's a little <laughs> it's a little hard to come by nuki brown so never seen nuki probably brown, in brown ales in general are not crazy popular here so if this is all that's available if you're living or visiting Japan, then it's a good choice. Newcastle Brown is kind of a little bit on the fatter side. It's not heavily carbonated. Mm. So I think that's why metal kids like it. I always imagined that scene liking uh, Jägermeister. Oh, that too, yeah. That's in the same. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> you start Nuki Brown. I see it. I'm sure there's like a Jaeger shot in Nuki Brown. That must be a thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Jaeger in Germany, isn't it considered like a, like a dessert wine or something? From what I understand, it wasn't always associated with that music scene or with the party scene. Yeah, that's what I mean. Originally, it was like a more like after dinner drink, high yeah. class people drink. And then somehow like along the way, it developed. It's the logo. Is it? I think so. It has a very like heavy metal It is a badass vibe, logo. Right? Yeah. It's got like the antlers and the very like gothic font that they yeah. use for the logo. Yeah. Well, shall we talk about some Amazon reviews? Have you ever left a, a comment or a review on Amazon? No. Me neither. Should we do the first review, I guess? Let's yeah. do it, yeah. So the first Amazon review, they gave this five stars. Wow, bold. Power of the people. So brave. We need a lot of bravery these days, you know? So brave. Five stars, so brave. The taste and the rich aroma are perfect. Thanks to a small drop in beer taxes, I switched from third beer. Third gear? <laughs> third beer? <laughs> Fourth beer? <laughs> <laughs> I wish the price was a little lower. Finish. Finish. <laughs> Finish. <laughs> I don't know. I think after my... If I was moving on to my third beer, I'd probably care less about taxes too. I think once you get to the third, fourth, fifth beer, I don't think you even think of taxes at all anymore, do you? I don't even think you think about how much money you have in your wallet. Beer and beer-like beverages are taxed on a certain... Three-tier pricing point. Tiers. There you go. Tiers, tiers, yeah. On different tiers of taxation. And they're actually arranged in the supermarket based on those tiers. Left is the Top beer? actual beer. Okay. Right. So left is the beer. Yeah. Second is the hop shoe. Yep, hop shoe. And third is the third beer. Third beer. Like so, the third eye. Yes. Yes. <laughs> also. So these tiers are based on the amount of malt 
contained in the beverage. And our packs accordingly. So I think what he's saying is he normally drinks cheaper beer, mm. like the third tier, like really cheap beer. But because he likes, he or she, likes Ebis so much, they, they splurge on it. So the second Amazon review, they gave it three stars. I still enjoy the regular Ebis and Sapporo Akaboshi. In the fall, I like Corinne's autumn flavor. When I come home after a hard day's work, I can't wait to sip on a cold beer. This is all a matter of personal preference. That's it. Okay. They, they didn't really comment on this amber beer at all, did they? They commented on Ebis. Okay. Yeah, they said they like the original one, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what about this one? So the final review, they also gave it five stars. I ordered it as soon as I found it, as if I had been waiting for it. I was very satisfied with the aroma and taste as I expected. If you buy it with a coupon, the actual cost will be very small and very reasonable. I want to know where you get your coupons. Yeah, coupons are nice. Yeah, but the coupons I get, like if I go to a Japanese supermarket and I buy like a bottle of whiskey, I get like a 5 yen off my next bottle of coupon. Do you get that? I think I have a coupon. The price does not become very small. In the winter, I drink less beer, but I definitely want to drink this when I have gyoza. Hiyoshi does not drink this <laughs> beer so much in winter, but they like this with gyoza. Hmm. Yeah, I can imagine it's pretty good with gyoza. Anything's good with gyoza. I think it's time to uh, take the plunge. All right, so before we move on to our Kanpai scores, we're going to try out this very aromatic, 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 fragrant, fragrance, fish tanky, fish tanky, gym shower. Have you ever had fish, uh, fish tank? Like owned fish, like pet fish? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I've had a fish tank before. It does smell like the fish food, fish flakes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. It does, doesn't it? It does. I can't tell the difference. It smells like fish food. Exactly like that. I think we should just dive into this. To be Let's honest. dive in. So um, again, this one is Anago. Oh, I will do a brief explanation of this. So yeah. uh, this is Anago. It doesn't say jerky, but it looks like kind of a dried fish right. jerky. And it's called Kongari uh, Aburi Anago. So it's a grilled dried eel conga eel it should have a yuzu taste and I, I think a slight chili taste as well anago is very famous in hiroshima and around miyajima uh, this is a local snack so i bought this in, uh, by the beach and some old ladies were selling this i feel like you might have wanted to have kept some beer for this just to uh, wash away the, the taste of it well i'm out <laughs> I'm all in. <laughs> I'll go first. Right. It's very thin. It's like translucent. It is, isn't it? You can actually see through it. Is it fishy? Not really. It's almost like caramelized. Caramelized? Soy sauce. Like, caramelized soy sauce. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little sticky. Tastes pretty good. Hmm. It's very firm, like a very... Thin slice of jerky. Uh, this piece I got the yuzu much more. I haven't even considered the yuzu yet. I taste the soy sauce and I taste the chili. Somehow the closer it gets to my mouth, the less it smells. The less fishy it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's very light, but it's also full of flavor. It's very flavorful, yeah. How much did this cost? 500 yen. Hmm. Okay. So for the amount that you got in the package, Slightly on the expensive side, would you say? Yeah. Does it taste like jaws washed up on the beach? It tastes better than that. You've tasted jaws? It, it tastes better than I would imagine jaws tasting like. Kampais. Let's start with a beer. Right. I would go six kampais. 
Me too. For the Amber Abyss. Six? Good, six right here. Six. Really? Yeah, I did. Yep. Yeah. We're just that connected, I guess. <laughs> I guess we just expect more from Abyss. Yeah. Due to the record. Yeah. It's not very memorable. No, it's not memorable. Snack is tricky. To give I've a already decided. To. Um, I'm going to go seven. I'm going eight. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I was thinking eight. So I'm like a seven and a half. Could be a little softer, a little dry. Oh, would be my okay. negative point. I see what you're saying. But it's spicier, and I got the yuzu taste. I and mean, I think for the price, it's actually pretty good. It's better than I imagined, and the taste overpowers the aroma of it. I was worried that the aftertaste would be very fishy or off-putting. It's not. It's actually very pleasant. So thanks for tuning in of another episode of. Kampai guys. If you'd like to see us try any other Ebis products, of which there are a few on the market, or any other local snacks like this, please let us know in the comments below. And again, if you're not a subscriber yet, please consider uh, liking and subscribing to our channel. And we promise we will deliver quality content. All right. See you on the next episode. Until next time.